Meow. Okay, what I want to do today is I want to do a test because there's a bunch of comments in my last video about how primes have better resolving power than zooms. So what I've got is I've got three lenses that go to 105 millimeter. I got two primes and a zoom. And the zoom is a, a little cheapy zoom from the 80s. I've got an old 105 f4 prime from the early 70s. And then I've got a 105 f2 DC that's the portrait lens that they made up till just recently when they come out with the new 105 f 1.4 g series so we'll see where this goes <laughs> all right what i've done today is i've brought out my golf cart with a bunch of camera gear on it what i want to do is i'm going to do a comparison how the d810 which i have with me its megapixel count is so high that you need a ultra prime to get the resolving power that the lens is capable of so that you get all you can basically out of the sensor in the camera well, we're going to test that today and i'm going to see what the images come out like let's do this the 105 f4 micro nickel my model today is this brand new swanky climbing gear backpack which i need to get some product shots of anyway so we're just going to use this and dual purpose it i'll shoot it all off a tripod that way i don't have to worry about vibration you know camera shake i'll fire everything with the 10 second timer that way you know me pressing the shutter won't be a factor like i said i'm going to shoot the same scene with the same camera settings with all three lenses with the same subject at the same distance Okay, what I have is I have the 105 F2 DC Nickel. I have the 105 F4 Micro Nickel from ages ago. And then I have the 35 to 105 mid-range zoom from like the late 80s, it's variable aperture. So it's like one of their most budget lenses ever made. It's all manual control, but it's even variable aperture. First, we're going to use the 105 DC Nikkor. Time to move the camera. I need this barrel to set the bag on. Okay, let's get our camera set up. Let's just fire off the frame. Okay, what I've done is I've set the camera to one sixth of a second ISO 64 f4.5. And what I'm going to do is now that I've captured this image with the 105 T DC, I'm going to switch over to the micro nickel. I may have to take a couple of test shots just to confirm focus, but I want to make sure the shots are sharp. I did 2.8. Got the wrong lens in memory. All right, it's saying it's in focus. So let's see what happens. Let's zoom in on this one. You'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. This is interesting. At f8, this lens is insanely sharp. So now we have the 
105 F4. Now let's put on the little cheap push pull zoom from the late 80s. All right, pull it out to 105. Let's get this bad boy focused in. All right, I'm on F8 now. Let's see where we are as far as focus. It says it's pretty close right there. So let's see what we got. Yeah, that's much better. All right, I'm gonna take these off, fix my hat. Okay, the 105 F2 DC Nikkor was designed specifically for portrait work. It has this defocus control ring. People think this lens isn't sharp. This lens is incredibly sharp. This allows you to control the bokeh in the background to some degree. The defocus control doesn't really change it much. It changes it just a little. But it's, you know, it's just, it was a pretty neat feature. And I think Nikon actually patented that. That's why you don't see it on other companies' lenses. And they only do it for two. They do the 135 and they do the 105. This lens is, yeah, they're a thousand bucks, give or take. Depending on where you buy it, it's a little more sometimes. I don't remember exactly what I paid for this one. It might have been 1100, it's somewhere in there. But that's a really nice prime lens. Next lens I have is the 105 F4. And this one isn't even an AI. I don't even think it's an AI at all. Um, it actually, well, yeah. Yeah, because it has uh, auto indexing because it has the little pin for the aperture pin on your camera to index with. So you'll know it has that function. So it is an AI, I'm sorry. But this is an early enough generation that there's a little shiny spot there. And what that is, that's where I put it in a milling machine and cut a little bit of a relief cut because it was dragging in my Nikon D810 on the surface right there. That's what this cuts for, is so it'll actually drive the aperture pin on the camera and I'll know where it's at. There's a newer version of this lens that has that already done to it, and it has a little ledge there that drives it. This lens, being a macro lens, has a lot of, it's like 340 degrees of revolution focus adjustment. That, of course, gives you the macro capability with this lens. It's close focus is says it's 1.55 feet okay the third lens i've tested today is the 35 to 105 f35 to f45 variable aperture nikkor lens this lens was made in the 80s there was a big fad at the time for variable aperture lenses to get the lens to be smaller i mean you know this is a 105 f4.5 this is a 105 f4 you know, you can see how much slenderer, you know, it's a smaller lens. Plus, it's variable. It's a zoom lens, so you can get wider angle and narrow angle. You know, I mean, you can get full color, basically. And it's a reasonably decent lens. It even has a, it looks like it's got a macro mode on it. It actually has a macro mode built into it that I just now realized. All these older lenses will have an orange M, and then it shows you the focus distance for the macro mode if you move it. You can actually see, you can see it telescopes the lens further out just a little bit to give you that macro feature. But it's got a push button release right here that you press and it, you can hear it lock it in so that you don't accidentally drift into macro and all your shots be out of focus. But you can move it out and then it'll relock. But this is a really interesting piece of glass. It's fairly heavy because it's all metal construction. As far as weight goes, it weighs about the same as the 105 micro. Yeah, they're very similar in weight. It's a neat little lens, and it's fun to shoot with. I mean, for recreational shooting, I shoot it on the Sony some. It shoots really well. That gives us a comparison from all three lenses as, as far as um, sharpness. But as far as resolution, I can't tell a difference between the uber super old F4 and the I think this is a 2012 version of this lens. So there's, you know, there's, they were still making these lenses till just recently. Now I think the new 105 G series is what the F 1.4 lens come out, and they, I think they scuttled this one when they did that. I want to see if 
you can genuinely tell a difference in the three images. So I'm gonna take the three images, I'm gonna take them right out of camera, I'm gonna not do any post-processing. I'm literally gonna go in and I'm gonna clip out the same section of all three images and stitch them together in Photoshop so that they'll be in one pane and then I can put it into the video here. As you can see, the images look as they do so you can and I've got them labeled so that you can tell which one's which but they actually look pretty close to one another the the little cheapy zoom is pretty evident the primes don't really have as much resolving power variation as I thought they would everybody talks about the resolving power of the lens and it's hard to see it it really is hard to see it of course I could have got it on a more beefy tripod i guess and i could have you know run it on the 10 second timer instead of the two second but at some point you got to draw a line so i drew the line there but these lenses are all great lenses uh, it just depends do you want do you want autofocus manual focus with uh, my with macro or variable zoom with you know that has a aperture that changes from 35 to 105 by about a, a stop you know it's a personal choice is what it boils down to so don't get so hung up in having to have the 105 f2 dc nickel because it's the best 105 it might not be the best for you i mean that's an expensive lens and if you're not gonna use that lens i use this lens quite a bit so I felt justified in the expensive purchase price. So if you're trying to, you know, get the best lens possible, look at what's the best for you. Don't look at what's the best that I picked or he picked or she picked. Pick what's the best for you. It may be that the, <clears throat> the little 50 millimeter F1.8 prime that's only like $100 might be the lens you need. Who knows, if you're shooting street photography, that's a great lens for that. You know, what are you doing? 105 F2 DC nickel ain't so hot for street photography. It's it's actually kind of a pain in the neck to use as you're trying to do candidates, just to be honest with you, you know. At the end of the day, you have to decide what are you gonna do with your camera gear. If you enjoyed this video, and you want to see more content like this then hit subscribe especially if you like the kind of reviews i do which is basically you know i'm going to use the equipment and i'm not going to worry so much about a spec sheet or a or a scientific analysis on a test chart i'm going to shoot pictures with it and i'm going to see how they look you know so if you enjoyed that like i said hit subscribe and you'll get more of it and if you like the video Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. You know, let me know in the comments what you did and didn't like. We'll go from there. Thank you very much. We'll see y'all soon.